Wow. As we gather together and share Eucharist once again uh, on this beautiful day, as is our custom, we ask if someone is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, and we will acknowledge that and pray with you and celebrate with you. Ah, quiet month. Um, anyone celebrating an anniversary? Okay. Then, if we may, remember these folks in prayer. As I'm fond of telling you, sharing with you, Deacon Stephen and I share that with you, that these are, there's a story behind every name, and so we, we remember. So for Carol Mills, Carol Bartlemy, Sylvia, Wilcox, Molly, Sue, Gina, all recovering from strokes, we keep them in our prayers in, in a profound way. And then many others who continue to ask for healing as well. For Mary and Vincent and Bill, Jerry and Philip, Joe and Victor, Rick and Kathy, for Anna, Tom, Eric Dunkel, young man that struggles with a huge tumor here, for Marion and Lisa, Hannah, Sandy, for Alan and Elaine Hansen and their continued mending, Michael, Connie Goulash, Barb, Amy, Larry Kaminsky, Jean, Christine, Sherry, Tony, Little Silas, David, Jean, Keith and Jim, Karen and Joyce, Sr., and for the recipients of organ donations and those anticipating organ transplants, we keep in prayer. And for those who celebrated the sacrament of marriage, we remember in a special way Lindsay Brennan and Stetson McCulley. May they be blessed with an abundance of great joy. So we gather these prayers and all those that are in our hearts that you have offered along with these folks as we gather here this day on the 27th Sunday of the season of Ordinary Time. So let's rise, greet our neighbor, if we so desire, we'll begin our worship formally in a moment.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Gather together for Eucharist, our great prayer of thanksgiving to God for the gift of Jesus. We gather once more to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. So once again we pause and we be at peace here in this place. As I like to say, we get a chance to breathe and pause and pray. And what is it that we need for the week ahead? As God gives us a fresh start and a new beginning today, make no mistake. What is it we need? Let us ask. You are love incarnate, Lord have mercy. You are an ending hope, Christ have mercy. You are the source of our faith. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us sing God's praises. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be seated once more to be nourished by God's Word. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. 
The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, what did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to just such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them 
placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. If I could sum up today the theology of marriage, and I've never, ever, I don't think I've ever, I'm trying to think the last time I spoke of this, and it was eons ago, but if I would sum it up, I would want to start with the first reading, because that's where it all begins. Otherwise, what we heard in the gospel will make no sense. We have to go back to Genesis, and we have to go back to that first reading. In our culture today, there is an incredible, incredible, um, there is an incredible push and looking at the individual and rights, which is one of the teachings of the church, rights. It's one of the seven Catholic teachings, rights. But there's, there's a real push, right, for the individual. What about me? What am I? Who am I? It's about that. And then if we go back to Genesis, what do we hear? It is not good for the man to be alone. And we hear right away, we want to pigeonhole that and say, well, yeah, well, that's a marriage, that's a marriage reading. We hear that at weddings. That's not apropos for, apropos for me, but it is. It is not good for the man to be alone. And so the emphasis from the very beginning of Genesis is that we were made to be in communion and in family with one another. Not a bunch of, I was going to use silos, but if you're a farmer, I, I love you. We're not a bunch of silos all separate, taking care of just me. It is not good for the man to be alone. So God made lots of, this is my favorite scripture, I love this. So God made a lot of animals. Did you notice? God made all the creatures and he gave them to the man and let the man name them. So blame Adam for hippopotamus and elephant and fish and all the octopus and all those things because God gave the man dominion because God, Adam named them. He named them and he was over them. And God brought them all to the man, and the man looked at God and went, Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, gee whizikins, God, thank you. Um, mm -mm. Mm, no. Mm, I, mm. No, not yet. So God put the man into a deep sleep. God created the woman. And there's where we get messed up because we think, oh yes, well that's inferior. God created a co-equal with the man because it could only take someone who could what? Respond to each other's what? Gaze, intellect, heart, humanness, feeling. And when God brought the woman to the man, the man exclaimed, oh, this at last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Now really, let's face it, if you have a spouse, when is the last time you looked at someone and said, oh, you're just the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh? Should I tell you what the Hebrew said? And God brought the woman to the man and the man said, wow, God, <laughs> you did it right. You made someone who fits me my intellect, my heart, my body, my soul. You made someone, an animal can't provide that. And so the woman was named Eve, a co-equal with the man. And so it is when you stop and think in this world as, as we live and move, isn't that what friendship is as well? 
I am going somewhere with this. It is friendship as well. Because a true friend, a true friend is someone who is deep and rich and can look you in the eye, who knows you, who knows what makes you tick, understands you, and is at a level that nobody else is. And that is an absolute true friend. Absolute true friend. Not someone who wants to use you. And what happens between woman and man? What happens is that literally, literally, and again, it's in friendship too, I'm going to guess. I say this at weddings to couples all the time. I say this all the time. And now you are number one. Isn't that what a husband says to the person's wife? Honey, you're number one. And she looks at you and says, honey, you're number one. Isn't that how it works? I hear a giggle. Isn't that what it's supposed to be? This theology of marriage is to literally say, you're number one. But isn't that what a deep friendship is, is to say, you're number one. And I am content to be number two with no strings and no subtleties and no push for the individuality. And I always think it's wonderful when couples get married, it is, oh, it was love at first sight. Whoo! It was love at first sight. And we just love each other and we have the same things. And if I look at a couple and I say, but it's God who chose you for each other, they look at me like a teenager going, what? No, God didn't choose her. I chose her. No, God didn't choose him. I did. And a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, there it is. Do you hear it? It takes me a long time to get where I want to go. God, what God has joined together. Jesus says this. He didn't let anybody off the hook. He was even more severe. What God has joined together is sacred. Because God had a hand in each of our lives. And I know that's going to be a real something for you to hear. God has a hand in each of our lives. No, when my father was in World War II, and I've said this to you before, it is squad of men, three times, 97 died, three lived, and he was one of the three. When my brother was born, the Madison doctor said, my, your, your, Caroline, you should not have any more children. My father looked at the Madison doctor and told him to go below. Hi. Hello. Luck. There. Providence that Victor and Caroline were brought together. Providence that we are brought together at a time and a place in our life. And the beautiful thing about that is that's the last sentence of the gospel. And Jesus brought little children, do you hear it? Brought little children to him. Kidlets, small sizes, ankle biters, the fruit of marriage at times are gifts. It's not about the individual, it's about God said, remember the very first, I'm going to close with this, remember the very first sentence, and God said it is not good for the man to be alone. We are created to be in dialogue and conversation with one another. And pain happens in our lives. Pain does and things that, eh, if you've gone through it and journeyed through it, you understand it. It happens when we get broken. And life doesn't move in ways and directions, but it doesn't take away the sacredness of God that we fall in love with God and that love of God keeps us together as family, as friend. And I don't know about you, but the best friends I have are the ones that look at me and tell me the truth. Those are always the ones that you want to deposit in the dumpster because they tell you the truth. You get mad at them, but you wouldn't have them leave you for anything because you care. That's at the heart, you see, of what we do here. 
God is at the center of everything that we do. That's the whole theology of marriage. That's what it is, that God has something to do with us. That's why I wanted to say that from the very beginning. And sometimes in life, life happens beyond our control. It happens to us in this world most often. That was planned. It's time for me to stop. And so it is, that's, I, I will stop. That, that is what, just take that in, look at that Genesis reading once again. Because that's what it is. And Jesus simply says, let the little children come to me. Be like, be like them. And so this day, I speak to you, to any of you, not with judgment or harassment or to make you walk out of this place feeling second class because I find that appalling. God has something to do with us. I pray that we understand that in our relationships and in our lives. Think of the best friend you have. <laughs> Was it luck you met that friend? Or did God have a hand in it? What say you? Amen. Let us rise. Once more, profess our faith and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is to you, most gracious God, that your daughters and sons turn to you with all our hearts. From the beginning, you made us that we might love and serve each other. Knowing you are with us, we offer these humble prayers. For those who shepherd the faithful, that they always seek God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For government leaders and legislators, that their policies support and strengthen families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For those burdened by physical and mental illness, that they find courage in God, through whom all things are possible, we pray to the Lord. For those seeking membership in the church, that they hear the word with open hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth and young adults, that Jesus stirs their hearts to inspire them to lead lives of service and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all present here, that their faith and simplicity bring them a deeper understanding of God's reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular for Theodore and Genevieve Bondi family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, hear our prayers. Hear us, God the Son, Holy Spirit, 
Hear our prayers, mercy, healing, peace for your people, Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated yet again as our sacred altar table is closed and prepared. Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through these sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. With the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you th thanks, God most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people while he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory. With one voice we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all of your humble servants. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Thomas, and with all the saints who have pleased you, throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us rise once again, for it is at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all unto everlasting life. Amen.
Before we close um, and part from each other today, uh, again, thank you so much. There are still some script cards available for Quick Trip. Again, uh, the profit was incredible for our church. So thank you so much for just buying gas cards. Um, so I'm, I'm still a Quick Trip follower until those cards are gone. And then I'll go back to my old ways. So um, I didn't tell you that last week, but I never go to Quick Trip except when they offer 10%, then I do because it helps our church. So um, if, if that's something you still want to do, we have that available for you yet today. Also, I just want to let you know and ask your prayers. Um, the uh, priests and pastor leaders of the Diocese of Green Bay uh, will be meeting on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday up in Egg Harbor. So we're leaving the confines of Manitowoc after many years, county, and heading up to Door County. Um, and having our three days uh, of clergy meetings on the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. So just please pray. Um, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there will be Mass on Thursday morning. And so that is in class, confirmation class for the adults on Wednesday night. Okay? So just keep us in prayer as I always keep you in prayer. Are there young people ages 3 to 12 that would sit with me at the step just for a moment? I have a very small story for you. He hello. Okay, when I was in, what grade are you in? Mm -hmm. When I was in seventh grade, are you ready? The seventh grade, so I said, no, that's going to be a while for some of you. That's a baby, yes. That's your little sister. Abby. Yes, and that's Abby. That's your sister. And your sister. And your sister. It is. That's right. Okay? When I was in seventh grade... Well, one more time. You're good. When I was in seventh... Oh, come on up, boys. Yes. You can come. You can. Because I didn't start yet. There's a sermon there somewhere too, I think. I, I'm not sure. Um, when I was in seventh grade, somebody looked at me. Are you ready? A young lady looked at me and said, I think you are really special and I want to be your friend. And she said, um, would you do homework with me? Well, I said, oh my goodness, seventh grade to have someone do homework with me? I said, yes, I would. And then at the end of the school year, I looked and I said, um, do you want to kind of like come to my parents' house and we can play a board game. And she said, me, be your friend? Not, no way, she said. I only used you because you're good in English. C can you imagine? Just, I said, that's what she said to me. And that's what I, you're, you're like, really? She said that to me? Yes, she did. You were only good in English. That's not the type of friendship I was talking about. The type of friendship I'm talking about is someone who meets you eye to eye and will love you and that's what makes that's what makes the difference that's true friendship that is true friendship make no doubt about it okay that's for you and thank you for taking care of your little sister i know that you all do and that's for you libby well someday when you're a little older moira thank you. you're welcome That's why I asked you great thanks. We love you. Don't forget. Sacred Assembly, let us rise. Let us pray. Thank you for coming. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into who we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. And let us pray the St. Michael prayer on the inside cover. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.